Hi, okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna start the webinar now. So hi everyone. Welcome to yet another webinar session here at Free Pay Company. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brina Godwani. I've been part of the Free Pay family for the past six years. And currently I am a content acquisition manager. Today we are going to talk a little bit about how to make money with soft photography at FreePic. Also, as always, there's going to be a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. So make sure you keep on asking your questions in the question box here in Zoom. Unfortunately, if you're connected through our YouTube live session, bear in mind you cannot ask any questions. Hello there. Hi, Prena. Hi, Dario. Hi, guys. I'm Dario Gutierrez. And on behalf of FreePic team, we want to thank you all for your sincere interest in this webinar today. And thank you also in advance to our speakers today, our panelists who will be joining us shortly. Um, I suspect that most of us would rather be in an in-person event like in previous years, but we can promise that we are all working towards restarting the free big space conferences across the world. Um, in today's webinar, we will discover how to make your photo portfolio more successful, more uh, profitable, and more up to date. And in case you have not started your contributor experience yet, pay close attention to the tips and advices that we will be giving you throughout the entire webinar. And uh, also listen carefully to what our special guests have to say. Um, in order to, to summarize what we will be discussing about in this uh, webinar, let me briefly guide you through the four blocks that will be grabbing our attention today. Firstly, we will um, dive into the visual trends and the color trends for 2021 and what is up and coming in 2022. We will also give you a sneak peek into the most downloaded resources, and we will give you tools to identify key topics and key themes for your productions, for your shoots. Um, secondly, my colleague Prena will be sharing with you the benefits of uh, joining the Free Peak universe as a contributor. And in the second half of the webinar, our special guests will join and they will share with you their daily routine, their, their workflow, their work process, how they do it, when they started. And at the very end, as my colleague Prena mentioned, we will have a Q&A session. So don't worry, any question you have, you can leave it, uh, drop it on the chat box here below, and we will collect all these questions and address them at the very end. So um, without further ado, let's dive into it. Uh, let's dive into what the visual trends for 2021 are and what are going to be up and coming in 2022. Um, as many of you might remember, uh, we have already touched on these uh, photo trends in 2021 in previous webinars. Uh, but as you can see here, minimalism, just clean and simple uh, compositions, the aerial view, just grab your drone if you have it and have these eagle eye images. Um, film aesthetics, this is also a very trendy uh, movement in, in photography in Microsoft. Just get intimate, get uh, a, a fine lighting and recreate great scenes. Vertical photography, very much in line with a social media trends and authenticity. Authenticity is one of my favorite trends this year uh, because it reflects, it portrays um, original and real models and real scenarios. However, in addition to this, we want to give you well, well, we have selected quite a few photo trends that we have identified as up and coming for 2022. So pay attention to them. The first one is silhouette. Yeah, that's just outlines, let's say. So create compositions, play with the light, create magical images by using the body shape. Um, outdoors, for some reason, uh, I think the pandemic really had an impact on us all because we have noticed quite an upsurge of downloads in outdoors photography. So forget about concrete and cement, forget about the urban uh, scenarios and go outside and, and to take your pictures there. Um, the third one is monochrome or monochromatic camouflage as we call it. Um, this for some reason, it's just attractive, isn't it? It's just fun, it's creative. So um, these are very uh, popular in the micro stock industry, including free pick. So play, make sure to also play around with that trend. 
The fourth trend we selected was inclusivity. This is a world of freedom, right? So the world has no standards. Um, just create a, it's a diverse and wonderful society. Go outside and portray all sorts of skins, all sorts of people. Um, the fish eye lens. Um, I think this is a very surprising photo trend for this year. Um, my colleague Brenna will also agree with me that it was um, a trend that was in the drawer for some time, right? We forgot about it, but uh, it's up and coming at the time, at the moment. So also kind of play with it. Blurred images. This is a very creative and easy to make. Just defocus your camera lens and just let the inspiration come to you and create very colorful images. Um, another photo trend is a very particular one. It's a golden skin. Um, it seems like for some reason, gold has become like the new makeup. We have seen it in many photo resources and it's a very trendy resource and it's um, bringing a lot of downloads. Uh, next is pictoric inspiration, one of my favorites. Um, basically, it's just become a, a, a painter yourself without a paintbrush. Um, so just select the best, the finest piece of artwork or your favorite piece of artwork, study it, study the light, study the, the, the trays, the outlines, and recreate that with your photography. Finally, low contrast images. It's just something that is very trendy at the moment. I guess it brings us some uh, nostalgic moments, right? So play with it, avoid too much lighting and recreate these kind of images. Um, in terms of topics, uh, it's just remember to be up to date, really. Remember to be up to date with world relevant news, with international headlines, um, with human and, and technological advances. Um, if you pay attention to them and you stay up to date, you will be able to lead uh, the content in this regard. So you will be the first one to create and publish related content. And you will notice once, and if you do, you will notice an upsurge in the number of downloads your portfolio receives. And uh, speaking of topics, obviously, we cannot forget about popular festivities, popular holidays. And Christmas is the best timing to be creative. Um, I highly suggest you or encourage you to step away from the traditional resources we all see in Microsoft, you know, the Christmas tree or Santa Claus delivering presents. That's great. And you will also be successful in that. But, you know, step away from that kind of experiment with colors, the, the color palette and the color trends that we will uh, give you information on now. Uh, experiment with that and create new resources, such as um, things that are more relatable to the end user, such as ugly Christmas sweater or New Year's goals, you know. Um, and also don't be afraid of go local. I mean, embrace your culture, feature your local cuisine, feature your local traditions. They do have, they represent a niche market and resulting in very good number of downloads. Uh, and speaking of Christmas, of course, we cannot forget about our Christmas promotion. We recently launched it and uh, we want you to make the most of it. Uh, bear in mind though, that we have a deadline, which is October 22nd. Um, no files after that date will, count, will be counted for the promo. So make sure you send, deliver, and submit your files prior to that date. Um, and I also think this Christmas campaign is like, it's like free picks token of appreciation to your work. And, and we want to show you love in these festivities because it's just the bonus we, you will collect if you manage to upload the resources, um, you will be receiving it in your December's bill. So it's just right in time for your Christmas presents. And um, next is color trends. I mean, how difficult it is sometimes to choose the color palette for your creations, right? Well, we want to help you with that. We want to uh, give you some extra information um, on what the color trends for 2021 and 2022 are going to be. And um, of course, we should start with juicy tones. I think all of you have seen it throughout this year, but it, they continue to be very trendy. Um, so, you know, these juicy tones are represented by very saturated colors, such as uh, orange or such as bright pink, magenta. 
And apparently this new trend is that everything has like a yellow touch, like a yellow accent to it. So make sure to play with these colors to give a boost of energy. Uh, moreover, um, nature, earth tones, uh, warm colors, for some reason, they just connect us to Mother Earth, right? Um, so they have become also a very popular trend. They are widely used amongst our community and um, it is proven to be very successful in terms of numbers. And blue, I mean, choosing blue is never a wrong option, right? <laughs> so calm blues is something that we have seen over uh, the past months. Uh, for some reason, they just make you trust or um, uh, they give you a sense of relaxation, of calmness. Um, use this color palette. And if you want to spice it up somehow, just use these subtle pinks that will make the perfect combination. And of course, do not forget about pastel colors. I mean, we've been with them for quite a long time now, right? However, they are widely used amongst Microstock users. So make sure to play with them still. And color block, just like the image you're seeing here on the screen, um, you wouldn't imagine how popular they are. They continue to be uh, best sellers. So make sure also you use them in your creations. And uh, Prena, over to you now. She will be mentioning some profitable ideas. Thank you, Dario. Um, so yeah, uh, here what we wanted to give you is a bit is a list of ideas you can use to get more downloads or even just use uh, for inspiration for creating new content. So firstly, we have made a list of top 10 images that are most downloaded at FreePick, such as smoke backgrounds, an empty blue, black, or white background, interior minimalist photos, and so on. With this information, what we're trying to highlight is it is not about the image being simple or complex, but it's about taking care of the image, understanding and seeing if the image has a usability, understand and see what's uh, and the most important bit is the quality. Don't send us images like this thinking that, oh, it's very simple to make and easy, so I'm going to create thousands of images. No, that's not the idea. You can create thousands of images, but please invest your time in creating images with that quality that we expect. Because for us in FreePick, the quality is the utmost important. Um, another feature that I wanted to uh, highlight is sometimes a same concept can be uh, presented in different styles. So as shown as in, in the example in the slide, sometimes one same concept can be explained and presented in different styles. So one has a more static and advertising approach, the one in my left, whereas the other one is a more authentic and casual approach, the one in my right. We are constantly looking for variety and both of these examples work really well. It's not that one is better than the other. Um, however, it is true that we have a lot of photos that are done in studio. So preferably uh, we are looking for more realistic and authentic images and scenarios. Another feature that I wanted to highlight are niche content versus standard stock photography, okay? So at FreePick, you can find various types of portfolios. Some photographers who only do typical Microsoft website, uh, sorry, Microsoft photos, such as photos done in studios with models, et cetera. Or you can find other, other photographers who base their portfolios in a specific concept. Um, or type of content such as futuristic, technological, digital images, which is quite trendy nowadays. However, this is just one small example of many other thousands of concrete concepts that we have in FreePick. With this, what I'm trying to, to portray is, again, don't be shy or scared to try new concepts or ideas. Always work on, on trying new concepts, but again, keep the quality in mind. It's really important for us. And you can also guide yourself with the feedback of rejections to see if you're going through the right path or not. Another feature that we have recently improved is our search filter at the web page. I don't know if you've noticed, but recently there's been a few changes in, in the search filter where you can uh, find um, at the top left of the page. You can filter not just by type of resource, but also during a specific time frame to see what, what is the current uh, resources that other users are uploading, 
Um, also, for those of you who don't know, there's a section called Free Pick Choice. So Free Pick Choice are content that our editors select that have the best quality. So you can always use that section to get more inspiration because for us, that is like better than the best quality uh, that what we have in, in Freepack. Lastly, uh, another feature that we have in our contributor panel that most of you all know already is if you go to contributor.freepack.com, uh, there's a section of recommended categories, which you can use as inspiration. This is a, this, in this suggestion box, um, is usually updated every month or so, and you can it always shows themes and categories which we are looking for in the next two months to give you time to produce and upload that content and for us to make the selection and, and upload them to the website. So keep on checking that, that box to see um, if there is any uh, themes or festivities that you can produce and create content. So next topic, why Freepik? Why should I upload my content in Freepik? Why should I be a contributor? As you know, in Freepik, we are constantly growing and expanding. Currently, just for you to have a wide perspective in terms of numbers, uh, we have around 80 million downloads only on the Freepik websites on a monthly basis, around 50 million user traffic at freepik.com only uh, on a monthly basis as well and a little more than 15,000 contributors also only at Freepik. So as you can see, the growth is exponential. Um, we are constantly working uh, for ways to motivate and grow um, and for you to grow and earn money as, as a, at Freepik as a contributor, because for us, there's no greater satisfaction to, than to see our contributors grow. Therefore, one of the incentives that we offer is the referral program where if you refer a friend using the referral link and your friend becomes a contributor, he or, and his or her portfolio is published in the website, you will earn a 10% of commission during a year. Another incentive that we offer, as my colleague uh, that you mentioned before, like the Christmas campaign, um, we always offer our contributors the acquisitions campaigns. Once every quarter, sometimes even twice, we launch campaigns in order to acquire specific content we might need, usually related to trending topics which are highly demanded by our users. And we reward you depending on the quantity and the type of resources you have uploaded during that time frame. the campaign is active. In the past, our biggest acquisition campaign was the one we launched for the COVID-19 content. But in general, we are always keeping, we keep on launching uh, these campaigns during important dates, such as Black Friday, Christmas, as my colleague Dario said, uh, Valentine's Day, et cetera. Um, recently, you also may have noticed we have um, improved our selection timeframe as we are well aware and we've received many um, complaints in the past that we take more time in, in making the selections, but we have improved it in a time frame of 48 to 72 hours. Um, although we have spoken about this in the past, uh, I'm not gonna enter in much detail. I just wanted to highlight the importance of taking care of the aesthetic and technical uh, issues when sending us photos. Take care of the spacing of the image. Let an image breathe, as you can see in the, in the slide, in the example in the slide. Also other factors that are important is the quality, the light, the contrast, the shades, the framing of the image, etc. Sometimes leaving space for text can also be useful for users who want to use your image for advertising purposes. Also, it is important to take care of the meta tags. Try to avoid generic tags that don't describe the image. It is better to have less tags, but that describe the image directly than to have many tags that don't add no value at all to the image. Lastly, I wanted to mention that due to the high amount of requests we have had from our co uh, contributors in the past, we recently added a section of collections to your portfolio. From now on, you can organize and create collections as you wish. So for a user, it's easier to, for them to go through your content and find a specific theme. So for example, um, if you have a lot of content of Halloween, you can create a collection pack of Halloween. And then for a user, they can go directly to your collection of Halloween. I can choose the, uh, the images that I like of that specific theme, download it, and it's easier for you. It's more organized, it's more clean. 
Over to you, Dario. Thank you a lot, Brenna. I mean, those images are terrifying, huh? <laughs> Speaking of them on Halloween, this collection uh, was made by our special guest, Leo Lintan, who is joining us today. Hi, Leo. How are you? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Hi, how are you? How is everything? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. We are very excited to have you today, Leo, and I think most of the audience as well. Uh, we received a lot of comments of how exciting it is to have you today. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, we were just discussing a few days ago, right, Leo, on what to describe, what to mention, what to share with the audience. And I think first and foremost would be the uh, how you started, I mean, your background. Can you please tell the audience a bit of when you started? How did you start? And when did this whole thing of uh, a love for photography started? Okay, uh, before I decide to be a photographer, yeah, uh, first, my hobby is a photography. Mm -hmm. And then I decide to have a career in photography. I start my career as a freelance photographer for corporates. Just uh, I just took photos for advertising and annual reports. So uh, I guess you first started how to make photos uh, and you kind of did your training in it and it started with the corporate world. But yes. then when did you jump to uh, microstock industry? Okay, uh, I started in microstock in 2009. Uh -huh. uh, my first agency is Shutterstock. Uh -huh. And then in 2015, I have a series in this uh, industry. I hire some people, uh -huh. I hire photographer, I hire assistant, I hire a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just need to uh, hire more people to increase my photo stocks. Because I guess, Leo, you first started as, a, I don't know, just having a, some extra income from Microstock, but then it became like a business for you, right? Yes, correct. Uh -huh. So um, can you tell us a bit of what's your day-to-day -day work? What's your, I don't know, the work process of creating such great content you create? Okay, uh, before I make a shooting, yeah, I just uh -huh. to need a research. What is the trend keyword for, uh, for instance, for for today? Oh, yeah. identifying the topic. No, you want to to create content about. Yes, I Excellent. create content. Mm -hmm. I need to find uh, the keyword first. I see. Yeah, in free pick in the contributor dashboard, you have recommended categories, right? Yes, I think my colleague Brenna mentioned it just a few yeah. minutes ago, true. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just found that today the recommended category is Christmas and New Year. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, I have a meeting with my team mm -hmm. and uh, we make a work plan, coordination and assignment. Who's doing who and who's doing what? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. Guys, just for all of you who are connected right now, if you want to leave a question right now, it is the time. Just drop your question on the chat box below. And Leo, um, so you gather with your team, you first identify which topic you want to create content about, but then tell us a bit about the work process. I mean, what do you start with? Is it first mm, getting to know the location, getting to have the paperwork, the models? Tell us about it. Okay. Uh, we have a team. There's a two photographer, including me. Uh -huh. We have uh, assistant, photographer assistant. We have two the graphic designer. Uh -huh. I search some images that my favorite image or more search uh, image. Mm -hmm. you no, know? uh, based on that, I create the topic for shooting. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, then and then I share my ideas to my team and give assignment to target. Okay. So you identify the team and then you say, you have to do this. You have to do that, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So the moment of the shooting uh, arrives, you, you do your photos. And what's the aftermath of that? I mean, you have the raw files, ah, the photos. After, after post-production. Uh -huh. uh, uh, for one uh, topic shooting, we have about seven, uh, 500 to 700 raw files. I see. So mm -hmm. I make about 20% that has to be a good images from mm -hmm. them. And then uh, the graphic designer make a, a retouch for the image and then make a, some 
uh, digital imaging. I see. Uh -huh. yeah. So you have a team, the graphic designers, they work in the post-production. And then yes. I guess something that is sometimes a nightmare for many of our contributors, yeah. the metadata, right? The meta tags. How okay. do you work them out? Do you have a specific member of the team who's working on that? Yes, I have an uh, administrator. The administrator is uh, uh, put the metadata in, in the image. Uh -huh. Using uh, Adobe Bridge. I see. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how many tags do you usually include in your files? Uh, maximum if uh, 40 to 50. 40 okay. to 50 uh, metadata. I see. Guys, for all of you who are listening live in this webinar today, just like Leo mentioned, it is extremely important just to have the right metadata, not a volume of metadata of tags. Just be very specific, be very accurate in what you're trying to convey, what message you want to convey and what specific content is related to. And uh, Leo, you have just described your day-to-day your -day work, I mean, and your work process. You select the, uh, the topic, you produce it, you discuss it with your team, who does what, and then you uh, pass that into the post-production, the metadata. Okay, imagine you have already published Uh, your content in the various agencies you work with. Yes. Um, how do you evaluate whether a shoot was su successful or not? How do you know if something was profitable or not? Okay, I'm using software called MicroStalker. Mm -hmm. So uh, the I can see what the best images that uh, sell most, mm -hmm. and then I I make another image that uh, similar to that. I see. And based on that, you kind of um, you select or choose what budget you're going to have for each topic. Because I guess that some festivities, for instance, they don't bring as much value as Christmas, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, well, I just, uh, in the micro stocker, you, you'll know what will be uh, most selling most. Image. Uh -huh, I see. Uh -huh. And Leo, once you have evaluated and you also, you know, um, you get to know which shoots were more successful, um, you have proven to be a very successful photographer. Um, guys, you can all check Leo Lin Tan's portfolio on Freepik. It's at H9 Images. Um, I think what's most relevant about Leo's portfolio is how um, well produced it is and the fine editing his team and himself does to his work. Um, Leo, I don't want to leave you uh, without you giving a piece of advice to all the attendees of this webinar. I mean, bear in mind that not all of them are contributors. Some of them might be just thinking whether they should start in the microstock career or not. What is a piece of advice you give to them? Okay, first, you have to learn about basic photography. Yes, most important, yes. right? <laughs> yes, most important. You can learn from your local uh, course, mm -hmm. or maybe you can learn from YouTube. Mm -hmm. A lot of channels that discuss about uh, basic photography. How did you do it, Leo? How did you learn? So I learned I learned from local <laughs> course first. <laughs> I learned from local course first and yes, I learned from YouTube too. Uh-huh. I see. So first the training, right? Any other advice? Yes, you have you don't have to buy expensive equipment, mm -hmm. but you have to buy a proper equipment first. Yes. I totally agree with you. It's not yeah. a matter of having the most expensive camera right it's about yeah. having the right camera lens and the right and being in the right moment yes mm -hmm. well thank you very much leo it was great to have you today um bear with us because we we are going to introduce our second panelist uh, yeah. but stay with us because we want to have you at the q a session okay thank you and uh guys coming up next uh our special guest Olga Petrenko, she's joining us today from the Ukraine, from the capital, Kiev. Hi, Olga. How are you? You there? Hi. Hi to everyone. Thanks for the invitation to your webinar. You know, uh, you exactly right. The stock photograph market is growing rapidly and changing so quickly. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in my opinion, since photography is one of the strongest of visual communication uh, with the customers. Yes. And uh, I think this explains this market. Plan. And the world lifestyles is uh, changing very quickly mm -hmm. and the more and more requests and different topics. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I propose to look back and understand what is the world talking about? Absolutely, what I agree with you. Mm -hmm. What newspapers, magazines uh, mm -hmm. write about and what are we talking about with our family, children, mm -hmm. or friends, you know? Yeah. So I, it seems to me this would be a good answer to your customer requests. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my opinion. It's mm -hmm. so important uh, to analyze the world trends. Yes. Uh, to read a great articles in a part of the authors uh, in every stock. And uh, you can understand what are you, what can you shoot about? Yes, yes. Olga, and I guess just like you said, and I agree 100% with you, the micro stock industry is a growing market. We see more and more people joining this industry. I mean, just like my colleague Prena mentioned, we are over 15,000 contributors today in Freepik. So oh. just like you said, Olga, it's a growing market, but how do you assess the level, the level of competition? Is it very difficult to stay you know, up there and creating good content? You know, it's a very good question because mm -hmm. the phot photography is not just about big ideas and creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a combination of uh, creativity and daily routine work at St. Leo mm -hmm. because uh, you analyze trends, plan, topic, uh, look for location, write script, uh, uh, choosing models, and all of the details. Mm -hmm. And this is most of the work before, before you shoot. Mm -hmm. So, together with the idea, activity mm -hmm. goes in a parallel with the finances, you know? Yes. Uh, yes. Which must also be taken into account in the planning shooting. Yes, yes. And Olga, based on your, on your very vast experience, because we, have, we didn't have the time to, to introduce you properly, but Olga Petrenko is the managing director of a stage a stock production company. Um, so they are very much aware of the industry's uh, current trends. I wanted to ask you, Olga, about um, your analysis and how, what kind of feedback you get from your customers. Oh, good question, thank you. You know, uh, shooting pass very quickly according to my feelings and uh, I really want to have time to shoot what mm -hmm. I have in my mind. Mm -hmm. and thanks to our team, mm -hmm. uh, where everyone knows their role and works in the same rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why each shooting uh, is like a small event, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Only here and only just now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a drive. Mm -hmm. Olga and... and... You were mentioning that you it requires a lot of planning, uh, but can you please tell the audience what your team, uh, how many members you have in your team? I mean, what's a stage stock production company formed by? How many people are working on a daily basis with you? Yeah, stage stock. Uh, the Metrosin Cage is the founder of stage mm -hmm. stock. Okay. And we have a two department, a two team and a production team. I see. So it's a different department mm -hmm. and uh, the first team is planning and do the shoot mm -hmm. and another team uh, do the post-production because you know uh, that the second, uh, the first and second departments is uh, too important. Yes. Uh, because you have a good shoot after trending, operation and big work before. But there are another part of the, the work ahead, which mm -hmm. is the routine, but you know, very important part, job, yes. retention, mm -hmm. documents, uh, uploading, and finally, uh, your stock will be uploading. Yeah, your and speaking, uh, speaking of, this, uh, of this work process, I guess the first thing you have to choose is 
what you're going to discuss about, but then your team have to, um, a lot of, it's very time consuming, a lot of documents required or having to find the location, makeup artists. I mean, tell us about uh, these tasks that you delegate to your team members. Uh, sorry, can you repeat this question? Sure. I, I was saying that after this planning, you have to delegate tasks, right, to your team members. What's the most difficult thing you find? What do you think is more time consuming? Uh, finding the location, arranging the work with the makeup artist. I don't know. Tell me a bit about the day of the shooting. How important is No, I think uh, every stage is uh, very important because... Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot refuse from idea, you cannot refuse for good location, you can't refuse from good uh, high level models, you yeah. can't refuse for post production. And I think that is, you can't mean, miss anything. Mm -hmm. The stage is preparation is important in case for one error, the job will not be accepted and your yeah. income, stock income will be lower. Mm -hmm. That's why I think the manage all this part mm -hmm. is. Mm, to extremely important right yeah yeah you're right <laughs> and, so and and your role as the managing director i think you have to also evaluate right whether the uh, a shoot was uh, successful profitable or not how do you understand the costs of each shoot and and how do you implement certain actions to kind of uh, level and balance these costs you know i think it depends on the topic uh, mm -hmm. If I understand that this topic is a trend, mm -hmm. uh, then several shooting for this mm -hmm. and can use more money. Mm -hmm. But if I understand that I want to try some new topic, uh, interesting, trying, uh, we can end, uh, we could add in a well, our own uh, shoot mm -hmm. a new topic, and try, and then when we get uh, analyzed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we should understand uh, will we want to contain this topic or no? Yes, so yes. At first, as I say, I think that analyze is too important. Yeah. I think just based on what you have shared with us today, you said first thing, just like Leo mentioned, first you have to choose a topic, right? Discuss it with your team, understand the costs, how much budget you're going to put here, how much budget you're going to put there. And then whenever the shoot is over, now you have the post-production, right? You mentioned that you have a team, but in, can you tell us about the post-production and uploading uh, process or stage? Um, how do you manage it? And if you can tell us a bit about what software you use to upload pictures, I mean, tell us a bit about this stage in production. Uh, yeah, uh, have a really easy model and property, as you know, is important for every mm -hmm. shoot get a right thesis. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we use FTP uh, stock submitter for uploading uh -huh. the stock. Mm -hmm. And uh, our release manager will check every document, uh, every technical details mm -hmm. to our photography. And after that, uh, we can upload it to the stock. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, to finalize and to wrap up the conversation, Olga, uh, we thank you very much for being with us thank today. You. But uh, just like I mentioned to Leo, if you can please just give a piece of advice to uh, the audience, to those listening to you at the moment, what do you think it's important whether you are evaluating uh, going into Microsoft or not? Uh, uh, the stage stop uh, uh, stop team has over six plus years experience uh -huh. and you know it was a different experience and we have uh, some mistakes uh, we have uh, some results so and uh, you know in conclusion i think that uh, during this time uh, we have tried many styles mm -hmm. uh, and got different experience so i think uh, if you like what you do and like your job mm -hmm. add analytics add a little bit routine work uh -huh. <laughs> and your project <laughs> will be definitely be profitable. Okay, so if I get it right, the foundation is the, is the most important and the foundation should be passion for what you do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, Olga. Well, thank you very much for your participation today. Bear with us for the Q&A session. Thank you so much, Olga and Leo.
Thank you. And guys, uh, we are going to finalize uh, this webinar, but obviously we cannot miss your questions. So um, we're going to uh, address them now. Prena, you hear me? Yes, I do. Excellent. Let me, there you go. So would you like to start, please? Um, the first question, do we have it in the slide? Okay, so I'm just gonna read it out loud and we see who answers the question. Um, just bear with me one sec. Yeah. What do you recommend for the first upload at FreePick? Mm -hmm. um, so as you all know, the first upload should be of minimum 20 uh, resources. I recommend you to upload the best of content that you have. Um, if you're a photographer, then stick to photography. Try not to mix different type of resources in your first upload, as the first upload is the decisive uh, factor to see if you become a contributor or not. So just send what you're good at, the styles that you're good at, and wait for uh, your portfolio to be accepted. Yeah. I agree with you, Prena. I think what I also mentioned to the, uh, our contributors is to your first upload should represent uh, the diversity uh, of your portfolio, right? And the type of resources, also the creativity, the colors, they should represent what you are going to upload in the future. Yeah. Well, guys, second question, let's see. Um, how do you count our images for Christmas campaign? Prena, go ahead. So we have an algorithm in inside when making a selection, we automatically know which tasks have Christmas content in it. And it's active from the time frame of the campaign. So don't worry, it's not manual or anything. We do have an algorithm inside that counts the amount of resources. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. And just in line with uh, the Christmas campaign, I, I don't want to be repetitive, but guys, please make sure to send your files, to submit your files before October 22nd. Sure. And the tags for the Christmas campaign, uh, you have it listed under terms of and conditions of the promotion. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Prena, it's New Year, right? And Christmas. Is this correct? Exactly. See, yes. Thanks. And please try to avoid if the image is not of Christmas, of not of New Year's, don't add it because we do have a team who will remove the tag if it doesn't relate to the topic. So please bear that yeah. in mind. That's right, Prena, because some people think that it's robots, right? Kind of exactly. analyzing and checking the tags. <laughs> no, we do. We do have a team. We have quite an extensive team doing so. Well, let's move on to the third question. Um, can we upload photos from a smartphone? Mm. We've answered this in previous webinars. So the answer is no. <laughs> we always, uh, as I've said various times during my presentation, for us, quality is the utmost important factor. Mm -hmm. And as Leo said also, it's not about having the most expensive equipment. Uh, you can start with a simple camera, it's just more important about getting the techniques of photography right more than um, what device you use. But mm -hmm. you can use a simple camera and take out amazing shots. Mm -hmm. So try to avoid smartphones because for us, that is very day to day and it's not high quality microstock website worth yeah. image. And guys, don't even try to disguise it because it is uh, it, it stays within the picture. We can tell when, when a photo is is taken with a with a smartphone. Uh, but just like Leo mentioned, Leo, when did you are you there, Leo? When did yes. you get your yes, your first professional camera? Uh, I have uh, the uh, Nikon D50. I see. Okay, D50 is one of the cheapest uh, DSLR for two thousand five. In, in 2005. Nice, nice. Well, thanks, Leo. Let's see if we can move on to the next question. Uh, Prena, go ahead. <laughs> Are you already working on letting us know the trends for 2022? Yes. Um, every year, this is the first thing that we do towards the end of the year. 
working in a creative industry and in a Microsoft website, we do this on a, on a yearly basis. We're con actually on a monthly basis as well because we're constantly seeing what trends are still actively working during the year, which ones maybe have drifted away and are not working that well. So it's something that we do on a on a on a, in our day to day, and yeah, I'm sure in the beginning of 2022 we will post a, a blog post about the trends of of that year. So stay mm -hmm. tuned, and I'm sure in the next webinar that we do next year we will definitely um, mm -hmm. add a few slides regarding the trends. Yeah, on top of the ones that we mentioned today, guys, silhouettes and the uh, golden metal, golden skin, these are very trendy. Let's move on then. Um, I am a texture photographer. Let me see, I can't. And I also contribute on Freepik, but I have a lot of rejections. Hmm. Um, Prena, go ahead, please. With texture photography, you need to be careful with the noise of the images and the qualities, uh, the neatness of an image. So um, it is a tricky one because it is very hard to create something that is very clear and of high quality. So if you have many rejections, I don't know your reasons of rejections, uh, but I can put my hand on fire that I think is because of the noise and the, the um, I don't know, the not cleanliness of the image. So maybe work mm -hmm. on that and I'm sure um, you will get a few, um images accepted yeah and i'm sure if you do the the right one um a lot of the most successful resources on our website are texture photography so yeah yeah uh, and you i might have to search with the search uh the fil filter that i mentioned mm -hmm. see other textured photographies yes. and see why they're accepted and try to compare with your images and and try to improve in whatever is going wrong because I'm sure there's some details that you're not aware of, but um, that can be improved. Great. So next one is how is paper download price calculated? Well, guys, in, at FreePig we work uh, with a um, revenue share model and everything. The calculation you can find it uh, the support contributor uh, FreePig.com. Uh, but basically we based uh, the revenue based on subscriptions and number of downloads. Uh, so you can go ahead and check it out online. Prena, is there something you would like to add to this? You explained it perfectly. Uh, if you want more information, uh, there is in support of freepick.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can have more detailed information on how it's calculated. Excellent. Moving on. Leo, a question for you. So please turn on your mic. Yes. Says, Leo, do you have tips? for people who work alone, not as a team? Okay, I was there 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you have to uh, have a courage, uh, have a, probably your mental have to uh, strong. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, it will be hard, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. You have to, yeah. You just Leo, I have think you to... mentioned about the YouTube tutorials that you used to see yeah. to improve your style. So I think maybe... Yeah, be... but YouTube tutorial is for uh, for techniques, for, for the photography technique. Yeah, but uh, I believe this, uh, this uh, the, the, the one who's questioned this is uh, one, one single person who wants to upload mm -hmm. to FreePick, right? Yes. So... You have to first shooting, you have to uh, doing some retouching and you have to uh, keywording and you're uploading. It's it's like uh, a lot of work, but it's doable, right? Mm -hmm. It can be done. It definitely it can, can be, be done. done if you it put work into it. Yeah. Hang just, in there. We have just don't think what this. is, but just do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of tips in our blog also if you want to use that as inspiration and uh, we work with lots of freelancers who work alone so we don't only work with companies or um, groups of, of uh, photographers mm -hmm. so just hang in there read a lot um, experiment a lot and and i'm sure you you'll do a good job yeah and guys in line with this question uh, for leo um, 
make sure that you also check our uh, special guests uh, portfolios you have them on our social media posts uh, we have put them in almost everywhere so you can just log in check the post and and check their portfolio you will have inspiration then i can assure you uh, let's move on to the next question are models shot on your images paid or they are your friends or families um, do you mind if we can redirect this uh, question to Olga? Olga, you there? Hi. Hi. Hi again. Yeah, you know, all of our models uh, were paid for them because we prefer that the models uh, will be not only uh, models mm -hmm. uh, because I like, I like live emotion, you know, um, Every photo, you, um, you can show mm -hmm. emotion through the photo, and I think that is professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we prefer to work with the actors mm -hmm. or people uh, who make real, uh, real live emotion. Yes. Because I think that the quality of every photo depends on the live. Yeah. I think very much in line with these uh, visual trends for 2021, if you guys remember uh, authenticity. I think what all guys mentioning is very much in line with this. It's not, uh, you don't only want a pretty face, you also want someone who's professional, right? And someone who brings uh, emotion to, to your work, right, Olga? Yeah. Absolutely right. In general, I just want to add to this question that it is important for the contributor to have a model release uh, mm -hmm. signed of with the course. model. So it's not Freepik who is going to have the model release, but it's the contributor, in this case, uh, Leo or Olga, the models that they work with, they should have a model release. It's true that in Freepik, we don't ask you to submit it directly, but we do ask you to have it in case the day of tomorrow we do require it. It is a factor so you can work with models with friends with family it's up to you really mm -hmm. but you have to sign a model release even with your friends and family if they are going to be part of the image yeah. thanks Brenna yeah. let's see um another question for Leo Leo it says hi Leo can yes. you mention your social media I want to discuss with you because I have never found your social media <laughs> well guys I think it is available on Instagram yeah it's Instagram. You can search H9 images. Mm -hmm. Are you open to collaboration, Leo? Yes, of course. Why not? Excellent. It's a good sign. People are interested in your work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, Leo and Olga, what type of images are the one he sell the most? Are the ones who uh, which sell the most? Which categories? I think we will do this in turns. First, Olga, and then Leo, please. Thank you for the question. As I said before, uh, I think that we should analyze the trends, world trends. And mm. depending on them, um, if you remember about COVID, for example, yeah, it was, and uh, say, the first topic, uh, mm. unfortunately. But uh, in parallel, I think that uh, we can shoot about our lifestyle what you do every day, your family do every day, lifestyle, cooking, working in the park, uh, healthcare, and others. So it's, I think that uh, we can choose the topic trends. Uh -huh. Excellent. Thanks, Olga. Leo, what about you? Which images sell the most on your account? Uh, what's, uh, which images is uh, local images? Like I live in yeah, I live in Jakarta. So uh, the image about Jakarta is uh, sell the most. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and people with uh, South Asian face, Indonesian face, uh -huh. uh, sell the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys. I encourage you all, as Mandario said in his presentation, that local images work really well. And it is a trend, so try to use a bit more of your environment of what you have around you, because I'm sure um, you will get lots of downloads if you upload them in free bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, will this live webinar be uploaded to YouTube? Absolutely. It is being uh, streamed right now live on YouTube, and it will remain there, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Prena? Yes, correct. 
Excellent. And we'll send it uh, via email as well to all mm -hmm. the participants. Great. And guys, I think that's all. Um, we thank you all for assisting this webinar. We thank you for your sincere and genuine interest in the webinar. I firmly believe that we answered some of your questions, but if you have uh, some extra questions, feel free. You have support at freepick.com for any issues you may encounter on your contributor experience. Uh, thank you very much, Olga and Leo, for your participation. It was extremely valuable. Uh, so we thank you again. Thank you. Olga. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Excellent. You also have our Instagram of Free Contributor that you can follow us and ask us any questions via the chat box. We keep on checking it on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. feel free to contact us in any way. And thank you so much for, for being part of this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and the information was useful for future photo shoots. Excellent. Yes. And guys, just like Prena mentioned, uh, make sure to follow us on our social media. But most importantly, you as a contributor or you as a new beginner, uh, log into our free pick blog. It is important to stay up to date with the trends, with the visual trends, with color trends, with uh, fresh ideas. You have all of that on free pick's blog, one of uh, the biggest uh, graphic design and photography uh, blogs in the world. And I don't know, just to mention, right, Prena, congratulations to all of you for uh, collaborating with FreePeak. We thank you because we are now a big family, right? Exactly. Yeah. Thanks to you, FreePeak exists and we have so much content at FreePeak. So continue the good job. And yeah, hats off. And I, we just hope that all these webinars and the posts in our blogs help to improve your content and we're just uh, an email away whenever you need to contact us. Excellent. Well, this is it guys. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Make sure to check tutorials and inspiration ideas on free pick blog and, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.